So North Africa and the Middle East, we are now covering the physical geography and the natural resources. So the first concept we'll go over um, back into the physical geography of North Africa and the Middle East. We'll briefly talk about the coastal plains. And the coastal plains regions are these are regions where they grow a lot of agriculture. Um, de definitely, normally, flatlands, um, fertile soil, oftentimes near water. So these regions are rooted in the coastal plains. Oftentimes you'll see a lot of these along the Mediterranean Sea as far as the Mediterranean um, in North Africa and the Middle East, in the North of Africa and the Middle East. Okay, and the next concept that we'll cover dealing with the geography of um, North Africa and the Middle East are the highland areas. And the reason why I'm showing this illustration or this map, it takes us back to the first semester, probably the first or second month of the school when we discussed plate tectonics. And just kind of a recap, this is a map of the world, of the globe, of course. But what it does, it shows the plates that make up the world. So remember we talked about in plate tectonics that um, the, world, the, the surface of the earth is actually made up of giant plates that are floating on lava. So we kind of talk about that. And when these plates, when they separate or collide sometimes, that is when we have things like um, physical processes like volcanoes, when we have mountains, mountains being formed, when we have earthquakes. So just a quick recap, I uh, wanted to discuss the highlands in the Middle East and North Africa. The re and this is right in this region, right around in this region. Um, in this area, the physical processes that occurred uh, to cause these mountains to form is when you have the African plate, the Arabian plates and the Eurasian plates, they all came together. So just the shifting of these plates, the landing of these plates, the, the building of these plates, um, the shifting and, and landing and colliding of these plates, um, they cause the mountains and earthquakes. They cause earthquakes in this area, but they also cause the mountains or the highlands in this area to form. And let's talk about the first group of mountains that I want to just kind of touch on quickly. Uh, these are the Atlas Mountains. So the Atlas Mountains are located in the northwestern, let's say the northwestern tip of Africa. And it's Africa's longest mountain range. The north side of it um, receives a lot of rain to, and it receives it to allow farming. But when we talk about it, also if you see the mountains can also act as um, a barrier for, to prevent the rest of the region from receiving rain. Now, and this is important, this falls right in, right around the country or it's in the country of Morocco. Half of Moroccans work in agriculture, and that is because their country catches the majority of the rainfall entering Africa. The mountains prevent a lot of it from going deeper into Africa, into the Saharan, Mount, um, into the Saharan Desert. The next mountains that we'll touch bases on are the Hages and the Azir Mountains, and these are located in the Arabian Peninsula um, in Saudi Arabia on the western side of Saudi Arabia, on the western coast of Saudi Arabia, on the Red Sea. So they stretch along the western coast of the Arabian Peninsula, and the longer mountains are the Azir Mountains. The um, Azir Mountains, I'm sorry, the Hajiz Mountains are the longest mountains. They go right around here. The Azir Mountains are taller and they are long, they're here, and they generally get more rainfall. The next set of mountains that we'll talk about are the Pontic Mountains and the, and the Taurus Mountains. They're, they're in Turkey, around the Anatola Plateau, and so the, that's located in here. And the number two, the second mountain range that we'll discuss in Turkey is Mount Ararat. And it's actually on the Turkey-Iranian border, right in here. So we know we have northern Turkey, the Pontic and the Taurus Mountains, and Mount Eret, um, kind of on the eastern border of uh, Turkey and Iran. Now we'll move to a different concept. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the climate of the region. And so... Talking about different climates, um, the most of the Middle East is um, a desert climate. The vast majority of the Middle East is a desert climate. It was not always this way, but right now, the majority of the Middle East is a desert climate. 
So that means water is a very precious resource in the Middle East. Um, the, de the Sahara climate, the Sahara Desert, which makes up every included in this circle, it's the largest desert in the world, and it's up to 3.5 million square miles. It is the size of China. It is also the size of the United States. It makes up pretty much all of the northern part of the continent of Africa. Uh, the next desert we'll talk a little bit about is the Gargam or the Karka Mountains, and these are actually called the Black Sand Desert. It's located in Turkey, so the sand kind of has a darkish or almost a black tint, and this is illustrated by this graphic. Now, on the edges of the, it, it's not like when you think about a desert climate, it's not like the desert is all desert and then it's a rainy area right next to it. What happens is deserts gradually become from being dry and arid climate, which is what we would call it with not a lot of rainfall, gradually more rainfall, and then you'll go into wetter areas. Um, the steep climate is what we call those areas of the desert that are on the outskirts or the edges of the desert that receive more rainfall. Steep climates, they receive about 14 inches of rain a year, and it's just enough rain uh, to support short grass, which is perfect for growing livestock, which is what is done a lot in this area. So here in Louisiana, I know 14 inches a year does not sound like a lot because it seems like we can get 14 inches in a good three-week span sometimes. But 14 inches of rain, that's what they receive on the outskirts of the desert. It's enough to keep the short grass growing in a steep climate, which is excellent for, growing, for raising livestock. Now we'll talk about the natural resources of the Middle East. Kind of have a lot going on in this graphic, but we'll make, take a lot. Um, we'll take a look at it. The Middle East is known for having a lot of oil and gas resources. 77% of the oil resources are in the Middle East. That is what this graphic is for to illustrate. Uh, this picture, oil, an uh, oil refinery. And what this illustrates also is this chart is that up to 66% of the, e of the um, oil reserves that we know that is actually in the ground, up to 66% of it is in the Middle East. 33% of the known natural gas reserves in the world are in the Middle East. And so, as you know, being where we are, um, especially where we're located in Gonzales, you need gas to get around. So countries depend on um, the Middle East for oil, and the Middle Eastern countries depend on that money, on the, on the revenue that they, they make from the oil imports. But the Middle East does not just make money off of, they just their only export is not oil. Uh, they also, the Middle East is very rich in natural minerals. North Africa and the Middle East are very rich in, natu in, um, in minerals. Turkmenistan has the world's largest deposits of sulfate. And these are, this is a mineral that is used to create paperboard, glass, and detergents. The country of Morocco ranks third in the production of phosphates, which is what we use to produce fertilizer. And when we talk about this region in North Africa and the Middle East, they also contain 10% of the world's iron ore reserves. Now, one thing that the Middle East has done as a result of being so rich with natural resources, um, there's been a push recently to build diverse economies. What that means is that the Middle East, the people of the Middle East do not want all of their the revenue to come just from oil, and mineral reserves so they're looking to branch out to get into other to get into other um, revenue streams so countries are attempting to lessen their reliance on minerals and oil by investing in other areas this is one of the areas this picture illustrates one of the areas uh, the United Arab Emirates has become a banking center for the world so the leadership in the United Arab Emirates they've taken the money that they are some of the revenue that comes into the country from um, from their oil exports, and they're reinvesting it into becoming a banking center for the world. Also, um, tourism is becoming big in the Middle East. Now, when we think about the Middle East, we do not think about tourism, but it's becoming extremely big. This is another industry that the leadership in the Middle East, they're reinvesting the revenues from oil into becoming um, tourism. This is actually an indoor ski Lodge. So this is actually an indoor ski slope. It is located in Dubai. Looks pretty cool. Huh? 
and this is actually another resort that is in Dubai so this is actually a water a resort on the water um, if you think about it's on actually on this is a hotel on the water a series of hotels on the water they basically created a, um, a island of hotels and resorts so these Middle Eastern countries have a tremendous amount of revenue um, c coming into the country from oil from their sale of oil and they're reinvesting it in these things the United Arab Emirates once again is in banking information technology is represented in here Dubai is becoming a tourism capital for the world remember highlight the answers to the homework learning targets and also answer the questions in bold lettering have a good day. See you in class.